then let's look at questions on India's 24 guys related party disclosures. NTTP has a controlling interest over the subsidiary SA, SB, SC. SC is a subsidiary of SB. P Limited has significant influence over its associates A, A1, A2 and SC has another associate which is A3. Let us try to put this up in a particular way. Let us understand how they have been put up. There is an entity P which controls SA and SB. Okay. SB controls SC. Control. Direct control I am talking about. SB controls SC. Apart from this, P Limited has two associates A1, A2. Associates that means there is significant influence. SC has another associate A3 in which it has significant influence. From P Limited's perspective, all are related parties. SA, SB, SC due to control. A1, A2, A3 because they are significant influence. They are associates of P. So they are definitely related. Look at from SA's perspective. P, since P controls SA, is controlled by SA, is controlled by P, P is related. SB and SC are also related because they are under common control with P. Correct? Now look at SA, A1 and A2. P has a control over SA. P has a significant influence over A1, A2 and A3. Therefore, in one side it is control. If both are under common influence or significant influence, you cannot say that they are related parties. But if one is control, other one is significant influence, there is a definite situation of related party. So for SA, SB, SC, P, A1, A2, A3, all are related. So if I want to give you related parties of P, SA, SB, SC, A1, A2, A3. If I have to give for SA, P, SB, SC, A1, A2, A3. If I have to give for SB, P, SA, SC, A1, A2, A3. But if I want to give out related party disclosures for A1, P is related, SA, SB, SC is also related. But for associate, A2 is not related or A3 is not related because between A1, A2 and A3, they are sharing common significant influence. It is if one is control, other one is significant influence, they are said to be related parties. But in this case, if there is a common significant influence, they cannot be considered as related parties. We have already seen above when we discussed about related party transactions, exclusions from related party transactions we have seen. Second, I'll go to that slide. Yep. If one is control, other one is uh, control or joint control, other one is significant influence, both the parties are related. But if both of them have some significant influence, then their common associates, they cannot be considered as related parties. Going with the same logic, if I apply it into this question, now look at the solution. What are related parties? For P limited, SA, SB, SC, A1, A2, A3, all are related. Same thing happens even for the subsidiaries SA, SB, SC as well. But if you look at associates, then A1, A2, A3, only related parties are P, SA, SB, SC. A1, A2, A3 are not related to each other. Clear? X is a financial controller of ABC limit. A listed enterprise which prepares consolidated financial statements in accordance with NDS. 
Mr. X recently provided a final draft of financial statements of ABC Limited for the year ending on 31st March 2012 to the managing director Mr. Y for a proof. Mr. Y is not an accountant has raised a query from Mr. X on going through the draft. One of the notes of the financial statements gives details of purchases made by ABC from PQR during the financial year 11-12. Mr. Y who is the main head of the direct managing director he owns 100% shares in PQR. However, he felt that there is no requirement to give such disclosure in ABC Limited's financials since the transaction is basically carried out in normal commercial terms and is insignificant to ABC Limited as it represents only 1% of ABC's total purchases. Guys, materiality is not even a concept here. So, your uh, Mr. Weiss, that is the uh, a managing director's contention is absolutely wrong. You will have to understand that a managing director is a key management personnel of ABC Limited. Since he is a key management personnel and holds or controls 100% of equity shares in PQR, therefore PQR is a related party to ABC. Therefore, whenever the, such a relationship exists, the nature of relationship and name of party should be specified. If there is a transaction, in this case there is a transaction and such transaction even if it is immaterial, has to be disclosed. On going through the queries raised by managing director, the financial controller explained the notes as follows. Related parties are generally characterized by presence of control or influence between two parties. According to India's 24, inter, uh, uh, identifies related parties, key management personnel and companies controlled by key management personnel. On this basis, PQR is a related party of ABC. The transaction is required to be disclosed in the financial statements of ABC Limited since Mr. Y is a key management person of ABC and at the same time owns 100% shares in PQR that is he controls PQR. This implies that PQR and ABC are related parties. Where transactions occur with related parties, India's 25 requires the details of transactions to be disclosed in notes to financials. This is required even if the financial stand transactions are occurred on arm's length basis. Transactions with related parties are material by their nature of transaction. So transaction volume may not be significant, but still they do not affect the need of disclosure. Let's come to the last question guys. S wholly owned subsidiary of P is a sole distributor of electricity to customers in a specified geographical location. A's manufacturing facility, a, man, a manufacturing facility of P Limited is located in the same geographical area and accordingly, P Limited is a consumer of electricity supplied by S. The tariffs in the geographical area are determined by independent rate setting authority and are applicable to all customers including P. Whether the above transaction is required to be disclosed as a related party. Guys, what is it? Ultimately has to be disclosed whether it is arm's length transaction or not. There is a related party relationship because S Limited is wholly owned subsidiary of P. Therefore, it has to be reported. In the context of the standard, the following are not related parties. Where he talks about Two entities simply because they are directors. We have seen all these exclusions. Being engaged in the distribution of electricity, S is a public utility and he had only relationship between S Limited and P Limited being supplier or and a consumer of electricity. Then P Limited would not have regarded the related party transaction of S. However, as per the given facts of the case, this is not just the relationship between it is, no, uh, it is not only the relationship between S Limited and P Limited, apart from being supplier of electricity, S is also the subsidiary of P. This is a relationship that is covered under related party relationship. In the view of the above, supply of electricity by S to P is a related party transaction and attracts disclosure requirements as per para 18 and other reliant requirements of the standard. This is notwithstanding the fact that P Limited has been charged the same electricity uh, tariff determined by the independent rate setting authority. That means that P has been treated on par with any other customer. India's 24 does not exempt 
from disclosing related party transaction merely because they are carried out on arm's length transaction basis. And that will bring us to the end of discussion on problems related to India's 24.